What is up, everybody? Welcome to my Photoshop tips and tricks series where we talk everything Photoshop. Watch my previous uh, couple episodes because we are doing a portrait retouching mini series where I talk about my workflow of all the things that I like to do as far as portrait retouching. And then what we're going to do is at the very end, I am going to be making one real long video where I actually combine all the techniques that we previously talked about and do one long portrait retouch from scratch, my portrait retouching workflow. Uh, but right now I'm breaking each thing down into separate episodes so you guys can follow along and learn, and then we're going to do it all together with one shoot. I shot this. This is in my um, portrait studio, my private portrait studio. I do my own lighting, my own strobes, and um, I own my own studio where I do all kinds of uh, portraits, shoots. And I had a hair light, a kicker, a snoot. And I shot this. And the two things that I like to do that you'll see in the final portrait workflow, retouching, is sharpening the eyes and sharpening hair. And you might say, well, how do you do that, Sean? Because usually when you do a filter, okay, or a tool, it's going to apply it to the whole image. Now, I used to do this different years ago. And I always say this, there's always more than one way to do a, a task in Photoshop. Some will save you time. Some will not. Some you'll get great results. Some you'll get so-so results. Um, so I try to combine them and try to do, get great results, but in a decent amount of time. There are tools that sharpen in Photoshop, no problem. I found using some of these filters to have better results in the end, less noise, more control. And what I've been using recently, now if you go back, again, to my previous episodes, to my early episodes, previous seasons of the show, I have done this before with various methods. Everything from the sharpening tool to unsharp mask, you name it, okay? Today we're going to do something a little different in this example. What I'm going to do is, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. All right? We're going to zoom in. Now, it's nice because of the lighting situation that I used on this. We're going to be able to get some great results. All right, specifically, let's, let's look at the hair here. So we want to sharpen up that hair. Now, let's be honest. It's sharp already. This, this really depends on what you're going for, what you're going to be using this media for, what you're shooting for. Word of advice, I say this on all my, my tutorials. I say this at my workshops, when I'm tutoring, when I'm teaching, when I'm doing a presentation. I always like to kick up my, um, my sliders and my results and over-exaggerate on them. The reason why is because of the way it's presented over the internet and how YouTube degrades video and how you guys are seeing it. So I always like to you know, drag the sliders more than I usually would. You guys don't necessarily have to use these high values. I'm only doing it for so you guys can see the before and after. But normally, I wouldn't use these high values. I would always dial these things down. I do this for demonstration purposes. Even like when I use direct capture, um, I always boost like brightness because I know my direct capture device is going to darken the image. Um, but I'll show you how to do that also. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the hair here. And we're going to concentrate on the eyes. Because remember, if you over sharpen, you start getting artifacts and you start getting halos and um, noise. And you don't want that. You don't you don't want any of that. So we're going to do that. Um, let's take a look at the eyes here.
Okay, so I just want to see that for myself. Okay, so I think maybe for this demonstration, I think we'll start right here. Okay, I shot this on the back background with the hair light for this demonstration because I think this will really, really help us out here to see what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to work what I call non-destructively. We're going to make a duplicate of this layer. Now, again, you could, you, you could title your layers, but for the demonstration here, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to filter and we're going to go to sharpen and we have some options here. For this demonstration, we are going to be using what's called smart sharp, sharpen. All right, and we got some sliders here. And we have a preview. And we can move this preview around. We can zoom in and out. So I'm going to go with, like I said, a little higher than I normally would, only because of the demonstration and how you guys are going to be able to see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to boost that up. I'm going to boost the amount up. I'm going to boost the radius up. But again, you guys won't be using these high values. I'm doing that because of the direct capture here. And we're going to go with that. And we're going to say, okay. Now, look at that. I could already see the difference. Holy crap. <laughs> look at that. And it's still applying it, but I could already see in the highlights of the hair. It's sharpening. On my end, anyway. Um... Now, this is a pretty big filter, so it's taking its time. It's applying it. Remember, this is a filter. Um, and, and also, this is a raw, this is a, this is a huge file. So this is, I, I converted it to JPEG for this demonstration, but this was originally shot with a large camera with high settings on raw. So this is a big file. All right. Now, the problem is, is that it's applying it to the whole image. Now, I don't know if you guys could see the before and after. I tried to boost it as much as I can. Look at the tops of the hair and look at the highlights. Without sharpening, with sharpening. I'm going to zoom in. Because I understand it's hard to see on camera. I do. Without sharpening with sharpening okay how about the eyes without sharpening with sharpening it almost makes it look like it's blurred without it okay but there's a problem it's too sharp it's sharpening the entire image and I don't want that because the skin is going to start looking funky especially if we start smoothing the skin later on you don't want that so what we're going to do is we are going to apply a mask, right? The problem is, is that the mask is in white. So what do we have to do? Invert it to black. Now, when I did that, did you see it went back to being blurry? Okay, so the mask is hidden under a black layer. So... My Photoshop graphic designers out there, where are you at? How do you paint in a black mask? With the color white, right? Let's get our brush. Let's get our bracket up. Before, after. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry, I was in black. That's what's that's a good example of what not to do. Here we go. Now, why would you want look at that? Be before, after. Before, after. Now you can see it. Why would I want to go back to black? Well, if you went out of your boundary lines and, and you started getting into areas where you don't want sharp, and then you, look, watch, look, you could detract, see? You could detract from it. So you would want to go back to black to fix up areas that you want to subtract from the mask. Go back to white. Always remember to go back to white. 
and sharpen the eyes. Again, guys, I'm overdoing it with my values only to show you what it looks like on camera. You wouldn't use such high sharpness. But I understand that it's hard to see on camera, believe me. Another thing that you might want to sharpen is eyebrows. Look at that. Look at that. Before, after. And I'll show you some hair here. We'll go right to the highlights here. Where the, where the hair kicker is aiming on. On our hair here. I had what's called a snoot and a barn door. Let's see here. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to get my bracket up. Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Before and after. Before and after. Hopefully it's coming up on your screen. Before, after. Okay? There you go. Um, smart Sharpen, I like it. I think it works good. Um, again, if there was, if I do, if I was dealing with jewelry, earrings, anything, rings, I would do it on that. Um, the eyebrows, anything, you know, with hair or anything with metal. You want those things to pop in a picture. And again, you wouldn't use 100% opacity. You would dial that down. Like, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Again, because of the way that the video conversions are with degrading quality. But, I mean, that's just way too too high. I would take my opacity and I would go down to about, whatever, 40 before, after. But I'm just trying to show you the best that I can. The results, okay? That is smart sharpening on hair and eyes. Join me on more future videos, and we're going to be going more in detail with this portrait retouching techniques on Photoshop. And like I said, I'm going to be doing a full portrait retouch from start to scratch and show you my workflow on what I would do to a portrait, okay? Take care, guys, and I'll be seeing you again soon.